It is not for some collector's curiosity. Welcome to uh, another Tales from the Collector's Curiosity. Hey, Ed, this is a special one. Uh, you know, I always got my co-pilot riding with me, Solo Wookie, Solo Wookie, say what's up? What's up, everybody? Good to be here. But then we're going to do a little crossover with a couple of our boys. Uh, you know, a longtime friend, a guy who's had a lot of lines with before, waiting for uh, books to come back so we can curse him out. The grades on him. <laughs> John, sorry, laughing. What's going on, John? What's up, man? Welcome. Welcome. Glad uh, to be here. It's like con season again. I've been doing a lot of videos lately with a lot of my old con friends, so it's good. And then, Matt, hey, you look, I am glad that we are not uh, using a pay per minute anymore because if it was and you get in a conversation with this guy, you're just going to have to get rid of the track phone because you, you'll run out of <laughs> minutes. There's so much knowledge that comes off of them. It's so fun. Uh, you'll go down uh, a thousand rabbit holes. Matt, say what's up. What up, guys? I'm, I'm going to try to laser focus myself here, but if you're right, I will go off and we will like explore this tangent for, I, I, I talk too much. I, diarrhea of the mouth, man. <laughs> no, it's all right. I've been told the same multiple times, uh, sometimes nicely, other times uh, people have opinions and they also got other things. Um, hey, so uh, one of the big things about this, and we kind of talked about it before you guys shot it, but you guys did have over at the foreign uh you guys did a great uh episode you guys covered a bunch of the number ones i mean a lot of the it, it's crazy first off absolutely crazy what you guys are doing in collecting that's beautiful um, oh, it's i that remember beautiful. i remember probably like one of my first hangout texts to uh john z uh and he probably thought i was crazy because we hadn't met in person yet it was years ago like six or seven long time yeah, ago when he was time. first getting into forwards and i was like hey bro you know what this is? I hear you're into Fords. And he's like, at that time, he's like, what, what huh? I'm like, he's like, it's deeper than that. Like, you have to go through this. And the conversation was so long over text. I, and it was probably not the right way to introduce myself anyways. So luckily, he didn't <laughs> hold that against me. Because I'm like, come on, man. Just tell me what it is. Because it was in a lot, and I had no clue. Um, but it kind of worked out after that. And I think my answer was, up. it's a Disney book. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, it's definitely a foreign. I go, oh, thanks. That's good. That's, That's a lot of help, John. You helped him out. <laughs> well, I mean, this is a long, long time ago. So then, uh, you know, I always send out certain questions to John. And I think now he just plays with me and is like, dude, seriously, you got to get involved. You got to get you got to get a hold of Matt. You got to start doing it um, and what they do over there. Um, and I finally did. I finally dipped my toes in there. So talk a little bit about what you guys do over there. Talk about kind of the magazine and everything, Matt. Okay, um, let's see. So the magazine was Foreign Comic Collector magazine. Me and a whole bunch of me and a whole bunch of dudes at uh, the CGC boards that were into Foreigns created it. Um, I have one, and so we we started this thing kind of very underground. Um, there were back when we started really researching and getting into Foreigns, there was nothing out there. You know, there was some comic journalism that dealt with with foreign stuff. But just concerted, foreign-focused, you know, type of material, it just, just it, it didn't exist. And so me, Tim Bildhauser, Liam Sturgis, Ken Worthing, Scott McManus, there was a big, huge group of guys uh, underground over there at the CGC boards. And we uh, we just started learning everything we could and, and, and writing down, you know, writing, doing the magazine. And we had been kind of caught by the foreign bug. You know, we they call it a sickness. Have you heard that, Nate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It gets bad. It does get bad. And John, I think John right up there is a very sick individual. That's you know, what I was going to hit up. You yeah, know, because really, it, it just gets you caught up. I don't know. Explain you, it, John. You get obsessed. You just, you're like, oh, I've never seen this. So I buy it. And then you say, wait, there's another one? I've never seen that. I'm going to buy it. And then all of a sudden you get a network of people because – it's not just buying on eBay. You got to, you know, have a conversation with these guys in the middle of wherever they are. And then all of a sudden you buy one book and they're like, well, do you want this book? Do you need other books? And, and it can get a little overwhelming if you're not careful of, you, oh, you yeah. don't realize how many books you've bought until you go. You, yeah, dropped, was, you dropped early on that somebody had a spreadsheet of, of deals made and book shipping. And I was like, I started doing that at one point because I had like 15 different yep. deals going on. Yep. There, I mean, that. think about that. You got so many. OK, so the, the first guy that really started doing that was this guy named Tony Pomilla. Tony also was back over in uh, 
at the CGC boards. He was very involved in this as well. Tony, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you explain that real quick? Give us a brief uh, explanation of what you mean by CGC boards. So at the CGC boards, we met a whole bunch of other dudes that were into forens, and then we went behind the scenes. We weren't doing it in. Hold on, Matt. So hold on. What I think he's asking is, so at, at CGC, the grading company, they actually have forums online. And actually before oh, yeah. a lot of this part, even John will test this. That's kind of where some of his, the groups got together for, for this channel too. Um, there was all these different like subsets. You could talk about grading. Early on, it was really cool, but then it kind of became overwhelming of how much stuff was there. And um, it became a little jumbled too. And then people, I think, different personalities kind of shined in different ways. And it, it got, got clickish. Yeah, it got very clickish. So then people start breaking off. And and to be honest, mm-hmm. Tales from the Flip Side is something that broke off of there under UD, you know, that whole thing, uh, CBSI and and you guys in Foreign did. And, yeah. and there were some people that grew up. Um, what's their name? I always talk about Comic Mayhem. That came out mm-hmm. of there. Um, I love Comic. I mean, I did. I wish they would. I hope the database is someplace and they bring that back one day. That's one of the best. And there's a bunch of other groups that ended up coming out of there. Um and that's what it was. I mean, it was just a big cha- – it was chat boards pretty much. It was, yeah, it was just the first place you could really go and, and have those conversations about comics. It was yeah. just the original. Yeah. yeah, I mean, without being on a floor, without being an LCS or whatever. It was like – but it was kind of getting into the next level of already investing in speculation. Oh, yeah. And just, even – but it would talk about certain stuff, like how you would obtain certain things or like how you would address – some of the stuff was like how to address early on in CGC stuff, like how to get your labels – properly done or um you know i think pressing came out of there for a little bit and stuff like that so that's yeah, what reg- it was. registry sets too which are recorded slabs mm-hmm. that then cgc mm-hmm. goes in and it creates a registry set and the yeah. people with the highest grades win and one of the one of the first things that made us realize that at least at the time that cgc wasn't <clears throat> that all that interested in what we were doing in the foreign world was liam was trying to get these cgc foreign registry sets done and they were just like laughing at him. They're like, no one's gonna, we're not gonna do that. We're not, we're not gonna do that. Those are reprints. So, yeah. You want a registry set of some foreign reprints? Who do you think you are, kid? You know, was, we were we were experiencing that already there at the boards, and that's kind of what pushed us underground. And we said, okay, we're just gonna all hang out uh, behind the scenes there. And we had a, a, a ton of hardcore foreign collectors, and that's really what spawned the magazine, and that's what spawned um, a lot of stuff. It's, it's the first time I met John was Foreign Comic Collector Magazine had a booth in in, in Indy, and yeah, uh, yeah, like can build first or second, oh, the first Indy Con because I wasn't even yeah, selling the there. I, was, I just took my kids around and uh, yeah, made them stare at the foreign comics for a while while he yeah. Had, ASM 300s that I'd never seen before and uh, 129s were the other one that I remember just being like, what the hell are all this? Yeah, it, it, so, it, you know, it, you're you're right. You're right, Nate. CGC was like this. The, CG, the early CGC comic boards were like this little bubble that just spawned all these different groups and it just kind of grew out of it. it, it so that's kind of neat, actually, I think. And so, um, and so was, well, before, a, a little bit of explanation for our... our folks and friends and viewers who didn't know or understand that that a bunch of 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 all that collaboration and people talking spawned off into all these little groups so yeah and gave us all of our all of our ability for having all the content and wonderful stuff that we have today otherwise you know you can't have there's just too much information so you had to have little pods of, of, of greater view I mean, those boards are still there. And like, I, you know, it seems like it was just yesterday when, you know, and everybody had a different name and everybody had whatever, but like, <laughs> it, it's it's crazy how many times you run back in and talk to some of these guys and you're like, da, 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 da. And you're like, oh yeah, on the boards. And the other person will be like, yeah, I was in, and you're like, oh, that's, you know, I think this is my like sixth name. So like, the, yeah, my kind of name. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like, it's tough to clean it up. But I mean, this is it. So, like, my experience with John was when I was sending all these back. He, I could see him going further and further down this hole, and I'm like, "Oh, it's deep." And he's like, "No, nah, no, nah, do it, do it." And then Solo Wookie sent me a book, and we'll get into that book later. And finally, I was just like, "All right, cool. I gotta, I gotta do it. I gotta get in there." And he's like, "Hey, um, John's like, okay, you're sure you want to go?" Because I was like, "Hey, how can I get this book or this book and this book and start sending him?" Stuff? He's like, "Listen, I, I'm not, I'm not procuring them for you, buddy." 
I got enough on my plate. You got to do it yourself. But I'll put you, I'll put you in uh, contact with Matt. And then like Matt is talking, he's, you know, he, is, you know, you have known from the boards or whatever, but he's also a comic book guy. So he's like one of us. And it's like talking to any one of us. Like it, it's like, you know, the guy forever after talking to him for two minutes. So he's telling me, what do you want? Where do I go? This is what you got to do. This is da, 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 da. Um, And I am a little bit overwhelmed with it. I'm like, well, that's not, you know, I'm kind of in the stages of laziness, right? Yeah, like, you want to you don't just hit buy it and ship it to me. Go. Yeah, I mean, I don't shop a lot online, but I'm like, hey, I call so I need something. I call somebody up, go like get through here, or like I know the bin to go dig in, or I got it, and I just have to get into my own house. I don't have to hunt as hard as when I was first learning the craft, right? Like it's not yeah, something yeah. to that effect. And this gets back into it. It does give that that little incentive. And the one thing Matt had always said was, uh just don't worry about it though. Like he's always, ah, Hey, hey this is going to happen. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't, don't worry, worry about, about it. Like, don't worry about it. Yeah. Cause you know, as, as America, especially in American world, we're so, you know, we're tracking every shipment We're we're, we're, you know, double and triple and quadruple checking our packing before we ship. And John will be the first person to tell you, man, in the foreign world, it's like rolling the dice. Oh, you'll and get so, it. No matter. And so, yeah. So, why worry about something you can't control? You can't freaking control it. If it's going to get, if the package is going to get ripped open by customs, there's nothing you can do. If your if your stuff's getting, you know, there's instances where you know stuff has been stolen or uh, packages have arrived and been ripped open and stuff was missing. Uh, all kind. I mean, pick the horror story. It does happen, but for the most part, it might take a long time. As you realize, Nate, this package from Brazil took quite a long time. But it will arrive, and you just you just gotta let it go off your shoulders, and this is and just realize this is the foreign world of comic book collecting. It's you sometimes forget what you bought, and it's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so that was that. So I was hearing, if the, if you think that kind of sounds bad, then this isn't for you. Don't get into foreign. Yeah. yeah, it just so happened that Matt was like, "Hey, get on the Facebook group," and there was just a horror of posts about like uh, customs at the time and what was going on in customs. And then I think you guys had done a video and you'd finally, somebody had finally got something in and they were like, oh yeah. And by the way, this book under here got sliced. And it was all these horror stories. So I just was like, well, I'm already starting this track <laughs> like three months ago. I'm like, I'm already starting this track. It's already kind of hit some dead ends in certain areas. Cause originally I was going after um, some Portuguese stuff and it just wasn't going to work out. And then mm -hmm. there's a supplier from Italy that just disappeared off the face of the map. And I'm like, okay, third time has got to be the charm. And at this point, I didn't even like. I kind of cared, but I was like, if it doesn't work at this, like, forget it. I'm I'm all out of this. I don't care what everybody <laughs> about forwards. I'm Here, done. Here's so a I, great example. Like you were saying, I live in Southern Arizona. When I ordered my Mexican spawns, they kept them in customs. I literally ordered them from six hours away. It took two and a half months to get my yep. books. <laughs> so, so the problem get stuck the in customs. The problem with me isn't upfronting the money because you have to upfront your money. And it isn't even about how long it takes to even get there. The actual, and I'll explain this here when I start going through it, the actual finding the books you want, trying to explain to somebody these are the books you want, that person staying around long enough to actually purchase those books, if they're still even available, then get it to you. Like that is a whole, that in itself will take you you know, sometimes two, three weeks. And, and that person might not be there anymore. You know, it might, they might be gone. Obviously, I didn't give anybody money before they procured the books or whatever. But like, you know, I mean, that could have happened easily too. So this is, so I found, so I found this listing um, and you can't really see what was on the side, but uh, it wasn't the stuff that I really wanted in this listing were these. And the, it, this is the, uh, the dark horse obsession uh, run. It's an Aja Ventress story. We'll get into a little bit later of what's in there. Um, there was some other, other stuff in, in this group that I kind of wanted too. But when, um, but when Matt got a, got me a hold of a guy named Jim, and we talked it over, um, and Matt gave me this warning, and he said, "Hey, listen, uh, this is your first time. Just know that everybody here is connected, and if you are uh, pushy or you're a jerk off or whatever, I don't, I'm, you know, we don't swear much on our show, but there's a couple of words that we could use to define how some people act sometimes." Maybe entitled is probably the best way to say it now. Where it's <laughs> if you act like that, uh, these guys are going to say, have a nice day. Mm -hmm. Good luck. So, I mean, you know, that's kind of 
common courtesy that I think we should bring back to most of the industry anyways. Me and Solo always preach that and how we should tr tr treat people anyways. But comic I definitely karma, put man. Comic karma. Yeah, comic comic karma. Karma. Yeah. And you, you know what's important about that, Nate, too? In the, you know, for, for those wondering about the foreign comic world, the reason we have third parties, their sourcers, their friends, their contacts, mm -hmm. is because they're in many ways around the world, we cannot access their auction system. In this case, uh, Nate, it was Brazil. So we can't access Mercado. You can't go to Mercado and figure out a way to create an account and 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 buy the books. Oftentimes they don't accept PayPal, all that shit. There's all kinds of reasons why you need sourcers. So when I share a source, I'm sharing that source because I trust you, right? Because yeah. sources are so important. Mm -hmm. So if 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 you were to burn him, then I it would look bad on me, right? So so what's interesting about foreign collecting is unlike with the American world where it's pretty much gotten to where you just hit a button, buy it now, and boom, you got it. It's more like the old school days where it was about creating these networks of sources and contacts and being able to rely on them to help you. Um, and so you a, a good contact, a good source is like gold in this game because if you've got a good source in a country that is difficult to get books out of and they consistently get you stuff, that's like gold, man. So that's kind of the the, the reasoning that I, I tell everyone that's new that I'm sharing a source or a contact with, be cool. Don't, you know, don't mess this up because it, it could have far reaching consequences. And, and, and I think that was kind of some of the point, like when I first started to try to go after those Portuguese books and some of the Italian books, and then I figured out like, oh, cool. Well, I can translate on Google. I can do this and that. But when you try to order it, they ask you for your local uh, address slash zip code, whatever it is. Yeah. And all of a sudden you can't, and you can't find a source. It's not easy to find the sourcers. I mean, I've been talking to a guy now for since the, four months now because I, when I originally tried to get the Italian stuff to try to see a way that we can turn him into a. It, it's not an easy. It's not easy. It's not for the faint at heart. Yeah. So, um, but that's it. So then the how this worked was I went there and I figured like the price here when it converted you're like uh, twenty bucks US. So I'm like sweet twenty bucks US. How much could they physically charge for shipping? No problem. I'll get all the books. I'll get everything else. How much is so that shipping? Also, that's, <laughs> that's million awesome. dollars. <laughs> <laughs> because I will tell you, I did get a package three months later, but before that, probably like a couple weeks after I finally got to Jim, which is now a month in the process, he goes, okay, cool. Um, by the way, and I'm not showing the books because I didn't add them. They don't have, no, there's none of these books left. And I was like, huh? So I hit Matt up. Because it is a little bit, I mean, Jim's great. He, he, you know, it wasn't that big of a language barrier, but like, I also don't want to pepper him with a thousand questions. So I go back to Matt and I say, Matt, in the listing, there's like almost a hundred books. Like, and he's saying that he, he's saying that like some of the books he can't get, but he has this work. And Matt explains to me that like these listings cost money per listing. So what they'll do is say like $20, but it's not $20 for the whole listing. Like it would be on us eBay. It's twenty dollars a book, and <laughs> some of the books might not be in that listing anymore because since it costs X amount of dollars to put the listing up, they just sell out whatever they can. Mm -hmm. um, Very different from American eBay. We're not used to that, but depending on the auction house, uh, some of these foreign sellers will do that. They'll just list all their books, put the price per you know price per book for it, and then people will just go in and contact them and sell them. And they're supposed to go in and remove the pictures of the books that have sold, but because they're lazy, they might not do that. So you see that often in foreign auction houses where they'll do that. Uh, because, and and I, I don't necessarily know exactly why, but I know it's related to how they list. You know, on American eBay, eBay gets its cut after the sale happens, right? So the seller pays their fee to eBay, their eBay fees or whatever. On foreign auction houses, it's different. You know, when they get their cut, can depend on 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 the the site. So many foreign sellers will do that. They will they will confuse would, an American by that. I would imagine that on the foreign eBay's, once you post it, you pay your payment or whatever, whether it be before or after. If you try and go in and just delete one picture out of it, I'll bet yeah, it's locked and it won't let you, and you have to repost it, in which they will yeah. recharge you. Yeah, so maybe. I, I, I could see why they would just be like, sorry, we do or don't have them. Yeah. Ride the wave. 
we're in this together. <laughs> yeah, but, but, yeah. But as you can see, I think the point of it too is like it works so different ways and like you don't want to bog down your your sourcer. So then you have to go back to like, a, I mean, it does take a little bit of a connection, but honestly, everybody was really great through it. Nobody was ever like, why are you asking these questions? And I don't think I asked, Matt, I don't think I was overbearing. With no, that, no, you were. And, and, and Jim, you know, that that's the other part is when you have good, solid contacts like Jim, he knows, he knows working with Americans that have never done it, that they're not, that they're not going to know the process. And he's a great guy and he's going to communicate with you. And uh, yeah, that's why those sources are gold, man. Oh, but, it also didn't help. It also didn't help that they had just done that face. Like I don't upgrade the stuff when they tell me to. So I like, so they forced me to do it. They had forced me to do the uh, Facebook new upgrade. So then mm -hmm. while we were negotiating price, the, the DM thing in the Facebook was all messing up and I couldn't scroll back up. So it was a oh, whole no. big mess. <laughs> but it was all right because I heard your horror stories and I was like, well, these books might just get trashed anyways. And I might have just thrown money out the window. Um, but hey, listen, in three months later, uh, in $125, I ended up getting this. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I wish I would have saved all the stamps I got because sometimes you just see things like this and you're like, wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, I did, yeah. Just... well, so the packaging. So I did shoot a video on, um, I shot a video on opening and we're going to try to cut that in here. So hopefully you can watch the opening uh, that, of this. Hopefully we can shut. Was... Yeah. I mean, because you'll get to see all the impressions. You'll get to see how the packaging was. I know this became an issue in one of the shows the other night while they were kind of talking about it. Packaging is very interesting. I will tell you that um, it it was done well on this one, um, but it was interesting. It was it's not they don't use painters tape like we use. They oh, don't. They, use, they use whatever board. they got. Whatever yeah. they got. I mean, you'll get some newspaper in there, and you'll get some. Well, watch the video. The box looks solid, man. That looks really good. I'm impressed with that shipping. Yeah. That is a nice box and container. Big, it was big uh, shout out to the man who made that and sent it. That's awesome. That's why, like, I'm not. I never complain. Like, it is what it is. I figured I wouldn't complain about the price. Um, I mean, there's nothing in here that's going to be like I wasn't spending thousands of dollars on books. It was more in the hundreds. Um, but yeah, so let's check it out. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna mute it right here. Too bad he didn't use any of the uh, exclusive run of foreign stamps. The Star Wars foreign stamps on that box. That yeah. would have really been awesome. Because well, I, I do collect me some Star Wars stamps, and those foreigns are a little harder to find. But I'm excited to see these books. All right, let's see what we got here. Hold on, I'm muting. Do not cut your finger. <laughs> cut away from the body, Marco. <laughs> How do you not have a lightsaber uh, an envelope opening lightsaber all right guys chris okay so i'm gonna stop right here so like this is why it's so heavy it's like he did a, a plastic wrapping so i don't can you see this so it's like a plastic layer like a thick thick plastic layer here oh, yeah. there's another paper layer right there and then under that it looks like more boxing so let me get oh, to that man that's awesome Oh dang! Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, all our all our fans out there, let's go ahead and start a uh, GoFundMe page for a mini lightsaber for Marco, an envelope opening lightsaber. He is grabbing the. One-handed uh, cutting utensil, and he is vi vigorously attacking the package in a slicing motion. He is going back and forth, and like the 12 parsec Kessel run, he is almost there, folks. He is almost out of the asteroid belt. He is going to make it. Okay, now this is something I'm not a fan of, and I know so you don't package like this either. Now that we're getting onto the inside, they're using pa he's, he used packaging tape. We use make sure this. So now we gotta be a little careful. So I'm gonna leave the mic kind of on. This is why this is the two. It, like it does look like he did wrap it before he taped it, though. He did. So that's good. That's good. I'm here's, that's good. Here's the inside. 
It's oh yeah, tapered around there, so that's the that's buffer. Nice. So the crunch, the crunch, bubble the wrap, crunch on the bubble, corner. bubble wrap with no bubbles left in it, which is <laughs> which is not, not a good sign typically. <laughs> but hey, you get what you can get. As the boy said earlier, you know you never you can't complain with anything that you get in here. Oh, cool. All right. So yeah. at some point, there may or may not have been a grown adult or child in that box popping bubbles. Yeah. Probably, probably the kids. We, oh, we all know we can't resist. All right. Well, that's okay. Oh, that sucks. Uh, did oh. run? But that seems to be a packaging, packaging issue. Okay. Hold on. Just I hope it's not too loud with the ripping. Okay. Yeah, okay. If it is, we'll just edit it out. Uh, the problem is the back. It's in another bag. Okay. That pretty much looks bent. That didn't hold up. Well, hold it. Hold it check, vertical. Let me check the lights real quick. Yeah, and then put it. Put it. Oh yeah. yeah. Bomber. Mm, that's all right. It's all right. It's okay. As long as it didn't color break. I mean, press. I mean, at this point, at this point, you know, you're you're trying to get whatever you can out of there, right? So, like, sure. yeah, I mean, I want, I have, honestly, the one of the best pressers, if not the best pressers. He doesn't do work for everybody else. It's just he's a good friend. We do our own work. Uh, we have always outgraded what we we thought we'd do. Sure. So, well, oh. as long as it's not too bad, I mean, that should. It doesn't look. It looks like a curve. It's not like a hard. What is it? Oh my gosh, that is super cool. You want to know what? This what the is the advertisement that? on the back of the book. <laughs> what? It's kind of like a bonus, anyways. So, look, so I wanted to get this classical one comics right here, right? Right. Okay. Nice. Book. Yeah. What's the book? But on the back, it's this gratis. Uh, it looks. It's like a poster. It's like an advertising poster. Oh, wow. chewy here. Let me see what Look at the foreign Wookiee. Right, 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 right. That's crazy. Foreign Wookiee. But uh, with that being said, before we get back to what actually came out of that box, I think we're going to turn it over to Matt and John because I think they want to talk kind of Indonesian sourcing now. or uh, Just, I guess a little bit about a couple books sounds like a plan. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right, so you want me to show the Indo? Yeah. All right, this is one we want to talk about. Six Melawan Galaxy. Now, this is a pretty, pretty cool little Star Wars book. I mean, Solo Wookiee. What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you see when you see that? I. What does it do to you? See, I really enjoy this because I mean, this is, this is like going if you. <laughs> If you go to Paris, you go to Europe, you go Italy, you're looking at the classic art. You know what I mean? Even mm -hmm. though there's an American version of of things, and and we all see the uh, the you know Americanized everything. When you see something like this, and you look at that Darth Vader, you look at that Luke there. You look at, I mean, it looks like an an old style classic European oil painting. The way these yeah. colors pop off each other, that that weird galaxy. I mean, I was I was making block letters like that as a child, you know, <laughs> filling them in and having the squiggly line, trying to figure out how to make it just right. And so it, it's it's very adolescent and pure in, in its presentation, and then they give you this Renaissance Italian, you know. <laughs> Painting on the cover and a completely different Darth Vader. Yeah. yeah. And the Indonesian market is well known for just completely redrawing stuff. You know, it's not just, hey, we got your cover and we changed the title. No, they will redraw everything. Here, I'm going to scan in a bit. Yeah. Look and, at yeah. that. Look at that. Yeah. And I don't think the co the computer ever does the justice for some of these covers. But like you can even see that they ha they have an understanding too on how some of the characters are. 
or how the storyline is supposed to unfold. I mean, that Darth Vader not only is kind of a rendition of the original sketch art, obviously, of Darth Vader, but also, you know, there, there's huge samurai undertones as far as uh, Star Wars. I think we all know about Kurosawa yeah. and stuff like that. And, like, you could see them adding it in uh, to the Darth Vader art there. You know, they make they make the Han Solo look like the rugged, you know, uh, pirate scoundrel type character in the background, even more so than what was actually in the U.S. version of this. Um, and you can see the yeah. rendition of what they think. Like, look at Luke. He looks buff, dude. He doesn't look like a little crying farm boy there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. going to be good. Yeah, um, he, he does look menacing. And look, uh, like you said with Han Solo, look at that strong chin on him, man. Look at that. Uh, it's like razor sharp. And I hadn't noticed before, but look at the reflection of the lightsaber in Darth Vader's eyes of Luke's yeah. lightsaber. Like they were trying to really go for that that detail. They're really putting effort into here. I am a little sad there's no uh, no Wookiee on the cover. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have to admit. Yeah, there, there's some cool Indo books that had Wookies in them that you would pro that you must own solo Wookie. <coughs> um, but this this book this is. The Six Milliwan Galaxy issue two. It was published by Marantha on in July of 1978, and it's it's really the story about this book. This book is Six Milliwan Galaxy, so this has issue two in it. Uh, this run had three issues. I think I sent them sent them there, John. You can click on all three, I believe. Yeah, there's one. There's one. Oh wow! Star Wars. Wow, that's crazy. That one that, that John had just showed is the one that I have for my Star Wars one set. You know, they, they take the classic Chaken mm -hmm. artwork and inspire that. And then the third one is really cool. I like it. Isn't that neat? Yeah. I've not actually ben, seen this one. Ben Tag Mott. Mott. So you can't talk about these Star Wars books without talking about one man. And his name is John Minteraga. He was an illustrator in Indonesia, and he... He's kind of credited. There was a lot of illustrators in Indonesia at the time kind of taking their cues from outside art sources. But John really is the guy that brought the comic books from outside of Indonesia and brought them in and redid them, redrew them, uh, just kind of exposed the Indonesian youth to that style of, of panel art. And then he redid it in his own style. And, I mean, he's... Oh. He's that dude is is a legend there in Indonesia, and you know there's a lot of Star Wars Indonesian books. Most of them are bootlegs. I would say, John, what would you say? Like, maybe almost 80? everything I've seen is bootlegs. I mean, almost like every bootleg or redraws and everything. But this particular series, these particular books are special because they're they're touched by John Mitaraga. Now let's look inside this book. All right. Look at that splash page. Six Against yeah. the Galaxy, issue two. John Mitaraga redrew it. And, you know, in many ways, it's a little bit more punchier with the art as far as so, the wait, color. Time out, Matt. Time out. Go I'm ahead. sorry. So these are two different interior page splash yes. pages. Yes. Well, the, the, the original one, U.S. and then the Indo. And then the, the Indo that we just saw. <laughs> so, so that's the, the U.S. there, the Six Against the Galaxy to the left. And then right there to the right is the splash page. And you'll see John Mitaraga's signature right there on the lower left. And he, you know, like John was saying, they will completely redo the art, completely redraw it. Wow. I mean, it's just, it, it's amazing, amazing stuff. And so it's like John is taking that shake, classic Jacob artwork and he's putting it into his own style. He's borrowing from the American style, of course, but he's just like we saw on that cover. He's adding that fresh coat of, Indonesian illustrator paint that just makes these so freaking awesome. I like how they have Luke's head like into the dirt. It almost seems a little more realistic. like he's in danger or realistic. Yeah. I don't know, man. I I, I dig it. I dig it a yeah, lot. It seems like so like it seems if we can go back too to some of these covers, because I was was it this one too? Yeah, like it just seems that they keep using more realism in like Surely, I mean, this one's a little out there. I'll be honest. With yeah, you. I, yeah. I'm not. A, I mean, that's kind of not a huge fan of that as much. I mean, that kind of just reminds me a little bit more of the Dunish, like 
take backs or like kind of mm -hmm. even Star Trekian. But like, yeah. uh, but you see, like with when we go back to this interior page where he's got the head down there, like if they're gonna knock him out, like yeah, the the one on the U.S. version really you got like little whiny kind of Luke passed out, looks like a kid about <laughs> to go to bed. We're like yeah. this looks kind of like how it would be. It looks like these creatures that that you don't know much about would come out. Knock your head over end. You'll be in the dirt, and they're gonna steal all your stuff. Yeah, on your stomach. And it it focuses on the actual artwork and the scene more than it, you know, like they do in the U.S. so that you could tell Luke's there, so you know it's a Star Wars comic. Yeah. You know who Luke is. Where when you look at the Indonesian version, it's more about the art. It's more about the actual storyline. It seems. It seems like they actually yeah. tell the storyline better with the art than than probably in the U S where it seems like they just want you to recognize the characters. Yeah. It's like a different, it, it, it's like, it's like, it's coming from a different perspective of the story. Um, and you're right. I had never thought of that, but you are right with Luke's face being up like that. It kind of draws your eye and you lose the sand people and you lose the background. And this is the other thing. Look at the Indonesian art Are the sand people, not more contrasty and more visible in the American art. It looks like they're kind of, Muted, in the yeah. background. You know? Well, and that's and that's kind of what I was wondering with some of these books because they're in a climate very similar to where I'm at in Arizona, and I never really, you know, identified with the the Tuscan Raiders, and never really they weren't like a big favorite character. But um, mm -hmm. I, when I moved from Colorado to Arizona, one of the things that really started to catch my eye more was the Tuscan Raiders and their their uniforms, their outfits, how or why they are the way they are. So I wonder if some of these more um, more sandy desert climate um, type of areas identify and maybe highlight the Tuscan Raiders being able to identify. I, I mean, uh, it's hot and sandy here, and I identify with why the Tuscans are so angry. It is sometimes <laughs> very miserable. He's yeah. like, why did I move here? So I wondered how much they and and like you were saying, they're highlighted here. Like, yeah, you really not see such them. the bad guy as a misunderstood guy. Yeah, yeah. This is another one. So we have our American on the left and our Indonesian on the right. And you know, now John had to go in and he, he he's he talking about from his panel. point of view, not from viewer point of view. Viewer point of view, it's. Your right Reverse. side of Indonesia and left. Yeah. Indonesia. Oh, yeah. Right side Indonesia, left side American. Um, and you can see he had to kind of mess with the panels a little bit. But you see that that center panel on the American, where they're talking to the stormtroopers, and then the top up right. Yeah, I think John messed up the stormtroopers a little bit. You know, the, the sand troopers got the red uh, shoulder pad. That's missing. Um, but it is definitely more contrasty. The yellow in the background kind of does contrast yeah. the troopers a little bit. And C-3PO, you know, looks a little – I definitely think the American is better. But it's – notice on Luke. Luke's looking at Ben Kenobi in the American. He seems to kind of be like, whatever, Ben <laughs> – Tell him whatever. I'm just looking. You know, it's it's the choices that John made are interesting in the way he they wrote are. these. They definitely are. Well, but yeah. you know what? Some of that. So some of that roundness and some of that artwork, you'll see it a lot. Like we've posted pictures on the Instagram before of like I have a session with uh, Dutch knockoff Star Wars toys, which are these mm -hmm. like in that era. There, it's kind of like a, a squishy type thing. And you'll see that roundness and that uh, not so much detail on the stormtroopers or on the droids like that. That's just common to, to to the knockoffs and the reprints on that. They don't focus as much on. It's not such a big deal that like they, they had the color arm plates or the uh, yeah the wheels or whatever. It just isn't it. They they rather use the color and the detail on the more important parts of the art. So. Yeah, that it's again, it's that whole different perspective thing. I will say that I like the. Uh, you know they're they're getting ready to go into the cantina. Yeah, that, yeah. that the Masaizli cantina. I like. You know, I do like the Indonesian panel of that better than the American. <laughs> yeah, where it shows crowded. Seems, yeah, yeah it, it's more. I don't know. It's a little more contrasty. A little easier to see. Little, I will say that I like the front end of the land speeder better on the where. You, but 
the I wish they would I wish they would have taken the front of the US version of the land speeder and mm-hmm. they would have taken the OB1 detailing and Luke detailing and and mix the two together uh, and use the coloring from the Indonesian. And I think yeah. uh, combine the two, it really would have been really would have been something special. All right, what's our last one over here? We, uh, the next one, one is the next one is talked once, Matt, about the difference in um, this isn't today. This isn't printed 2020. Technology has advanced quite a bit since then. Yeah. This is yeah. an older one. It wasn't as easy. They had much different printing presses back then, especially in third world countries. So we oh, have yeah. to take that into consideration. And the pigmentation of some of the inks was a lot harder to get a hold of in a third world country, not an American country. So th- I think mm-hmm. part of that adds to the, the difference in the the yellow backgrounds versus having, you know, a, a brighter red or, yeah. it, you know, some of that stuff really comes into play. Just the absolute engineering and technology behind the paper, the, the ink, the uh, accessibility, the cost. Yep, and you know, I guarantee you that the press that ran this Marantha book is going to be way different than the presses that that Marvel was using. That's probably right. much older, the you know, much creakier. There was probably a difference in the way they made the plates for the press. Um, yeah, you're 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 absolutely right. So, you know, technology, the technology difference between that Indonesian book and the American book are going to be different, and it's going to create a different result. So and, but, and but, not always worse. Not yeah. always worse. Well, in this next panel, show this next panel. This is where yeah. I think the Indonesian actually went better. Sorry. Okay, so this is this is at the end of issue two. They're getting ready to jump into hyperspace, right? Mm-hmm. I like the Indonesian last page better. I do think uh C3PO gets a little lost in that top panel. But that bottom panel that John Mitaraga did is just punchier. It's just better. I like it. I mean, I I, I think that the Millennium Falcon just looks better uh, in front of those colored bars. I mean, look how much more vivid the Indonesian printing is. Yeah. And it held up better. I mean, that's the one thing I don't think they – that's what – I mean, I know that they had, were limited in their coloring and stuff like that in the, in the paper that they could use. But I think mm-hmm. that in the end – what pops our eyes and kind of even how it converted, like in the U S you're trying to push out that book, like a million at the time, like, you know, copies mm-hmm. and go here. You aren't trying to do that as much, but you're trying to keep the colors in there. Once again, I think it's the art style. We were trying to, in the U S be like, Oh, you know, this character, that's why you're picking up the book where they really were selling the art. They really were making the colors pop so that some kid goes like, Ooh, ah, not, Hey, I know that guy. I'll pick up the book. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Style to sell yeah. it. That, that, that different perspective. Yeah, that ink is really solid, man. Look at the way it's just packed in there and just held so clean. I mean, different paper quality, different ink quality, yeah. and it, just longevity of time even seems to have really helped pack that that ink and just show it and display it so much cleaner and better. And, and yeah, I think you're right. It just pops. It pops. It's better. And, you know, and, and again, I feel like we're if we're going to have like uh, if we're going to compare, of course, the, the comparison aren't apples to apples. But like in, you know, I'll, I'll use the Turkish Uze bootlegs as an example. There's something okay. so novel about going and seeing how these other countries without without the specter of the license and the license holder. Right. They could just do whatever they want. The, the same thing that makes those Turkish Uze bootleg figures so amazing is the same kind of thing that makes these these bootleg comics so freaking amazing. It's 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 that same kind of novelty dripping off of it. I mean, it's just it, they're just super cool. Um, um, we, we talked before. There's several countries that that the printing was better. I mean, uh, yeah. a, a lot of borrows out of Mexico. Uh, the the paper they used internally was better um you, you talk about the cornos out of italy in oh the 80s, yeah 70s and they just the printers did a better job than they did because we were doing it more as a disposable print of hundred thousand to a million and they were maybe doing smaller runs on mm-hmm. presses designed for their stuff and some of that stuff is just gorgeous when you get it in hand and, and look at it I, i've had some of the uh the, the spider men's and it's like wow those are crisp they're just 
it, you see that vividness more than you do in some of the other stuff. You know yeah, what's kind of, you know what's kind of funny about the whole thing, right? Like when you start getting down to this a little bit further, and you always think like, you know, we talk about a lot on our show, like especially when we talk about maybe what's going to happen in the future or how stuff happened in the past and what they're doing. We always keep referring back that a lot of this comic book stuff was really to sell other things, right? It's always the basis of, it's kind of like Saturday morning cartoons. Saturday morning cartoons, sure, they were going to make some money off of the infomercials or the commercials that were on it, but but truly what it was was to sell toys because the profitability of toys was there. With comic books in the U.S., like, yeah, in the DC era, in the early era, in the gold and silver, yes, you make money off of it because it's almost like the newspaper business. But by the time that we got to here, when you start getting into the bronze ages and the copper ages and stuff later, it wasn't so much like that. It was part of this whole mass thing to sell toys and to sell and get you to the movies and to buy VHSs and, and get that point to it. But when you see these smaller countries where it's like, no, we're going to try to sell them. And Matt has talked about this before, and this is probably not the right uh, we would be on a show for like three hours if we start getting don't, don't, don't go there. Yeah. Uh oh. But like, but like some of the situations that were going on, yeah, some of the situations that were going on in some of these countries, like this was their entertainment. This was their movie. This, this is where they were making their profitability. So they did have to present it when you have a choice. Are you going to buy the, the, the bootleg toy, which costs X amount of dollars and was more expensive to produce and then cost more money? Or are you going to put a little bit more money into printing and press produce a better product and, and that way you're going to compete with the other products and sell that instead of them buying something else you really were competing with these things in a whole different marketing arena than you were in the u.s i mean i know we all love comics i know we all collect them i know we all complain and like how sometimes foreigns they didn't treat them that well but you got to remember like this is like back when we were playing with a toy before it became collectible right mm -hmm. like there wasn't it was there one book or their one toy or their sleepy blanket or their stuffy or whatever it was. This was it. It wasn't, it was more special to them then, but they had to use it because it was the only one they get. Like they weren't, it's not like in the U S where, you know, we buy one, our parents would buy us one and then buy a second one. That was not the style over there because they, first off, a lot of these countries didn't have the money to do that. You got one. And that's why you don't see them always in such great shape. Yep. But also that one had to be produced better. You know what I mean? It had to be reduced. Sometimes you didn't even get that one. Sometimes you had to rent it at the library. And I'm yeah. not watching their, their show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, this book, I mean, there's a reason why foreigns are not, you know, uh, what was one of the first things I told you, Nate? It was like that whole American anality with uh, condition. Leave it Leave it alone. Put, put it off to the side because... The first thing you're going to learn as a newbie getting into foreign books is that condition does not matter nearly as much as it does in the American market. Because these foreigns, just like you guys were saying, some Indonesian kid got this book off the rack and he worshipped it. And he shared it with his brothers and he probably – his cousins would come over and, 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 and read it. And, you know, and like you said, Solo, there were in Indonesia booths. Where because it was because the kid was too poor and we, we see this in all over the world in all the poorer countries booths where you would go and you would rent time with a comic now for an American we're probably thinking wow that's crazy but yeah so you would go up there and you'd give them like your 15 cents and that got you 30 minutes and you got that comic and if you still had some time you said well can I can I look at that one and blah 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 these books. When you find them in decent condition, it's particularly this one. Look, the, the bottom had like a chunk taken out of it. Uh, up here in this corner, that chunk is out. But this is one of the nicest copies of this book that I've seen. I When I saw it, I was like, yeah, I got to have it. I don't, I don't care about, you know, all the condition stuff. Because it just is, you know, it is not going to matter. A lot of these foreign books, they did not have, or foreign countries uh, where foreign comics were collected. Remember, they did not have a bag and board culture until long after we did here in America. I mean, in some of these countries, they're barely getting it now. So That's a good thing. Let as, that uh, sink in. As our boy McClay would say. So I'll show you now. Uh, you know, we got the unboxing video and everything, but I'll show you kind of what, what I got and gone through it. And I actually did leave a couple that um, even after the unboxing, we can kind of show you how it was because they didn't come in, in, in bags and boards. Um, also, we can kind of talk about some interesting things uh, about some of these because 
they turn out to be uh, some surprises if you saw the video in there, and we'll go a little bit more in depth into it. Um, oh, I guess I can start off with with that librarian that was renting out those books. I mean, I get out there and I'm like, get off my lawn, you know, I'm like, quit folding my pages, you know, I, these kids have been like, don't rent from that guy. <laughs> that yeah, librarian you guys there. anal about his books and their Terrible. condition. Yeah, they're coming with sticky <laughs> fingers and all kinds yeah. of stuff. Wash your hands. Where's your gloves? Yeah. <laughs> it's been like, I'd have never made money. So the cool part about Jim too is like when I ordered, cause then I, then when he started giving me the price per book shipped, I was like, okay, well this is, not gonna complain about it. Just this is not what I thought. It's a little bit more expensive. I'm glad I started oh, off with yeah. something not as rare because it is what it is. But I got some of the obsession ones. These were some of the ones that were left there. Um, here, maybe I should go full Such screen. Such good books, man. Yeah. So it's it's number one, and this, and I'll go through what these are in a minute. I'll go through these storylines first. But I want to show you some extra 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 um, little tidbits. I should probably take them out. Right. This is a big problem too, right? Like they don't these hqs do not fit into <laughs> even silver age like they don't fit silver age it, they, it's too They're wide tall. on the side but it's tall enough they don't fit golden age because it's way too watery and big they don't fit okay so i got two of these they don't nice. fit um they just don't fit in bags and boards so i'm gonna have to figure out what i'm gonna do with it but <laughs> that's known as you've heard of Paul's problems. That's John Z problems right yeah. there. So yeah. Z, if you could, uh, I know those <laughs> boys over there at, uh, I know uh, Ben came up with the, you know, they got the barricades over there or whatever's going on with that. If you could come up with foreign uh, boards and bags, I'll, like I'll, I'll invest in that so that we can get these guys proper boards and bags. But this is how it was shipped pretty much. Like, look, they just, it's, it's wrapped. They wrapped it. They just wrapped it in a piece yep. of plastic and then taped. Yep. The crud out of it, and some of them were even more tape on it. Some of them had packaging tape. Uh, you know, it, it is that kind of what Matt said too. You're not you're not going for nine eights in these, so I didn't worry so much. But what was cool was after I paid for these books too, I was like, yeah, yeah. He, Jim threw in a couple extra ones. He threw in a couple of Vader ones. That was kind of cool. Uh, this oh. character, you know, these were like so. This storyline has got to deal with like the bounty hunters. Like these were from. You know, these were from original books that they put in there from the original Marvel run. And there's some cool stuff in there. These were the 25 year uh, uh, edition collector type things. They were really cool. And then, of course, you saw this in the video, the Classico with the gratis on the back. I still haven't opened this yet. Uh, it says exclusive. Uh, let me see how good my uh, Portuguese is. Stars. Oh, so this looks like it's almost a. Uh, it looks. So it sounds like it has something to do with like a. Uh, it's a poster, but it actually sounds like it's a planetary poster or something. I don't know what that means. Huh. Uh, maybe I'll open it at one point. I guess why not open it at one point? I'm just going to figure out when I'm going to do that because I don't know. I just think it's cool. Uh, but, yeah, that it was is. cool. I thought it was just – well, you know what? I'll just open it. Oh. That's it. Done. Done. You know. You know so, so Jim just threw that in, right, Nate? Yeah. Yeah. So I – That's and awesome. I off in the front, and then I was like, hey, is that classical – uh, a hardcover book because some he did have some TPBs like he had the uh, that you got to be careful with these foreigns because like some of the foreigns even though it's in the listing they're not actually foreign so there was like some TPBs there that was like he had an open season and another one and I don't know what the other one was uh, I can't remember offhand but whatever it was I was like no I'd rather not have any trades and he's like you sure I was like no because it's American and it's, I already have them or whatever. Um, I, I do love that picture. There's something about that that backboard picture that I just oh that's right, it's got a giant Wookiee in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well the first page here's got a Wookiee in it. Yeah, so this is this is just a hardcover. This is Star Wars classic comics. It's uh number one, it's a lot of the Marvel stuff that they had in there. Nice. Um, but let's see if this is really cool. Oh, it's in another Oh wow That's cool. Whoa. Whoa. Maybe maybe you shouldn't open that. Yeah, I'm probably not going to open this. Look at that. There's more oh, to it. Wow. This is a big – so this – okay, so I see what this is. So this now is look. a big planetary – okay, so it's going to be huge, a huge poster with a lot of these covers and art in it. I don't know, man. Oh, that's cool, I have to open it. 
I, you might. It, you, it just got cooler, you know what? Like now, you that's know? a newer picture right there. Because if you look at that lightsaber, that um, ex that expelled energy on the side of the lightsaber, the blade on the Darth uh, Vader, that didn't come out yeah, until well, well, okay. So late, this is like this later ninety nines. But so this these were redone. The, the like the, this Lucasfilm classic stuff was redone. And I guess Planetel was probably the people who actually had the official licensing of this. Yeah, but this was back. Was it? Say it again. Planeta. Okay, cool. Now, yes. Now you say it, Marco. Yeah, right. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, I'm trying to look for a year. Yeah, so this is this is a newer book. This is 2000 and it has a trademark that looks like 2015 in it. So I bet you this is going to be huge. This is going to be a lot of cool art. Um, hold on. You know what? Forget it. Who cares? It, it was a freebie. We might as well. Yeah. We can probably to... find you another one. The sealed. Well, if you don't know what's in it, you know you got to know. Now, have you, John? Have you ever seen that? Or, or Matt? Have either of you ever seen that? I know. I don't chase much as much of the modern stuff and and i don't do a lot of store wars so no i i just haven't looked but the, the packaging will just ruin anything that you're i know it, by the way feel free to criticize how i'm opening stuff and then we'll see how you <laughs> open stuff all right so, uh, <laughs> exactly. oh man oh it's just like well you can get an ipad it looks like it's an advertisement hold on Okay. Huh. Yeah, it's it looks like that first part was kind of supposed to be like the oh oh, oh that's cool. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So oh this doesn't fit into our stuff at all. It's the Star Wars timeline. Oh wow. Oh, wow. That's cool. Wow. Very cool. That. Whoa, you need to press that and frame it and send it to me so I can hang it on my wall. Oh, yeah, well, I mean, it's a beautiful Portuguese. Somebody, somebody's got a new uh, background for their uh, their show. Oh my god! Look at the th look at how weird the throng looks too over there. That's dude. This is uh, that's cool. And dude, for Jim to really just throw cool. that in there for free, that just yeah yeah yeah. Cool he that threw it in, threw it a couple because I kind of mentioned it, and then I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to. You know what? What I said like I was telling him, I was like, hey, I'm really sorry, really sorry. I'm having a problem with my Facebook Messenger. First off, I don't do Facebook a lot. Uh, any of you guys who've tried to hit me up, you know I'm also in charge of our Instagram account, which was the, the biggest mistake we've ever done with the show. <laughs> uh, besides allowing me to talk, I think it's the second biggest mistake. Um, so like, yeah, there's, there's other things I do mainly. I'm not big into that stuff. So like to, to try to communicate was an add-on and the understanding thing because, you know, once again, we are in the mindset. I was in the mindset of an American buyer, even though I've been warned and you just, it doesn't, it doesn't, yeah, either way. So he's kind of, I, I think he just threw in like three books, which was That's nice because awesome. I was expecting to only get the obsession ones. So these are the U.S. versions of it, okay? I just want to show this because I want to kind of tell you the difference here now too. Uh, and I got two of these. I love I mean, that. It, it, That's yeah, cool you know, so like it, it is changed it. around a little bit. Uh, the HQs, if you if you look at it, that is that, is that cover. And here, oh, we can put it next to it. So it's a little that, bit different. Like intentional almost. Yep. Um, but the cool part is, and we'll start getting into it. So like some of the reasons why I wanted to get these books was because it tells the story, this venture storyline. And it's kind of, this is inside Grievous's ship and Obi-Wan runs into it. And then Grievous is out there uh, choke killing Jedis. Um, if you know the story at all, Grievous ends up getting like, completely almost destroyed and dooku is like uh we spent too much money making this guy this is all during the cold war era it's a really good storyline it has dooku grievous mace windu uh obi-wan kenobi in it a couple other jedis um and the part about it is is eventually dooku right here it says finisher pretty much sends the sentinel uh, uh to shoot her and leave her on the planet she then has like this embrace with Obi-Wan where it's like, oh, because they talk about like how she really wasn't bad. It leads into like later on, we always bring up the Dark Disciple books and how she became a bounty hunter and stuff. And this is kind of storyline going into it. So it's something really cool. 
Um, you know, if you can find them for the U.S. version, they're cool too. The Obsession storyline because it might be something eventually they do if they if they try to go in Ventress. And we do think Ventress is a good character. So, but like it's cool. Like it just is a cool storyline. It's something I always enjoyed, so I bring it back. But this is this is where it's going crazy. This is what this is what the loot. Oh yeah, I did get one other book too that I didn't put in there. Um, I was trying. I might try to get this whole set. Uh, let me get down into this picture. Is the Darth Maul ones now? The difference between the regular uh, Dark Horse for the um, Brazilian uh, editions and the HQ is something really cool. And you kind of saw it in the video. And I will do it with the one, unfortunately, uh, which is number one HQ that came in. And it was not Jim's fault. He didn't know the packaging because it was so shrink wrap. It was what it was. This is kind of some things that you're going to catch in here. It is the one where the cover is completely detached. It came out detached. And it's unfortunate because now I have to find this and I have to find what the other book is. And as I said in the video, holy crud, there's a bunch in here. And one of the cool parts that's in here, um, especially in number one, and it goes into number two and three, but does not go into number four, is after they tell you the obsession storyline. Da, 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 da. Let me get to it real quickly. Um, oh, here we go. The last story in the book, because usually there's two or threes, is this. And we all know what that is because it's Django Fett open season. Yep. And it's the, so this is the first part of Django Fett open season. And it's got, you know, it's 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 the whole story for it. Uh, it I'm sorry, I'm trying to do two things at once. You know, it's just the whole story for Django Fett open season, which is completely cool. It's also kind of stinks because I don't think they made an HQ book that has – that is Django Fett open season. So you're not going to get some of those cool colors in it, covers in it, but you're going to find them in these books. So, you know, in two, in three, three, I think has a two, three, he has like the last story in it. In four, unfortunately, the coolest of covers, the Aja Ventress cover, uh, the, the, the storylines that they have in there, and I'll show it to you, is a grievous. It's like they redid the obsession. They did a Grievous uh, story in it, which I was confused at why they did that. Because um, it doesn't, you know, they did a general Grievous storyline, I guess, because it kind of ties in. I mean, mm -hmm. look at the art, though. I mean, these art pages from the right side are just dope. Um, but I was looking because I was like, okay, well, they have to give me open season at the end. <laughs> and instead of open season, uh, you get the... Skywalker, Mary Jade, love or what Maria Jade love story. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Which I know some people like. I know we've talked about it with many people, and I know they're big fans, and I know that's probably not going to show up ever. But it was kind of disappointing because you were hoping to get the whole run of open season in there, and now I got to find out where one of the books is because it's just not in, just not in there. It's missing a book in there. So now that's what I'm saying about the rabbit holes. You're going to start going down. Plus now I need to get one the HQ one back because uh, you know you want one with a, an, an intact cover attached cover yeah so yeah. that's gonna now that's the secondary hunt then also two I have to get the rest of this run here I have to get I got two <laughs> I have to, because one because one had already sold and four had already sold <laughs> you got to be careful bro <laughs> if you're if I, I would love for you to go down that rabbit hole but. Uh, and there's a way you can do it. One of the ways, you know, it's like this thing we say all the time. You can't collect what you don't know exists. Well, the way you deal with that, and this is the other part of this part of the hobby, you almost have to become a researcher. So I could I could show you where the Portuguese database is, where you can find that information and and learn it. I mean, ask John. One of the one of the first things you gotta learn is you gotta learn what the foreign book in its title is so that you can search it. There's a reason he's got so many Italian 300s. It's because he's figured out exactly what he needed to search on Italian eBay to find the dang things. So, <laughs> it, it, you know, that's research. You, you've got to educate yourself on the books, what's out there. Foreign databases helps you do that. But you're right. I mean, think about it in American collecting. If you had to go and, like, hunt for the information to find and figure out what's there, what's not. There's all kinds of tricks to do that. But – um you know, we'll, 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 so God help you. I thought going in for like a hundred, you know, I figured what, look, uh, throw $125 in into the pot. What is it? I mean, I know everybody's finances are different, but like $125, 
give it's an example. Month, you let's, know? See, let's see what happens. I'm not going to try to go after any keys right now. I would just go after some mid-level stuff, get a little, get at least one run together, and uh, then I'll move on to the more expensive and stuff. How, how genius is your connection that he's just like, I'm going to slide in this Darth Maul. Watch, watch. This. I'm going to slide <laughs> like, yeah. this in there. <laughs> hey, poor, poor Marco's going to be calling me in a month. All right. I got to find the other ones for that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, that's he's it. Like, he's like, oh, I got them now. <laughs> for, for, they're great. If you know what you're looking for, they'll just kind of add it to their list. And also a yeah. lot of them will like hold stuff. Like if, if you're looking for stuff and they find book one, and but you're like, I don't want to pay to ship that. Just just keep holding it until we've got yep. enough to make it worth our time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but that's it. So, so then, but that's part of it. So I was going to move to something big. Now I have to. I'm just not going to yet because now I have to get the one, the one for the HG. Then I have to get the figure out where the last book is for the open season. Then I have to get the other three malls. Okay, so I have to get all that done. So that's you know that's going to run me probably another 120 bucks there, which is fine. It is what it is. And and, like, and don't forget the the we do pay a finder's fee for these sources. That's something yeah. that let's let's let the viewers yeah, know they, that too. They're, they're, they're not going to do it anyway. Way. Yeah. Yeah, I want you I wanted to give people a little bit of a feeling just for what kind of modern books were costing. I mean, obviously yeah. it's gonna be more expensive to find the rare stuff. And, the, and those guys are catching on to what the rare stuff is. They know yep. what it is, so it's gonna be harder. And like, but this was just to try to test the market to see. And I mean, I suggested too, like go out there and don't whatever your budget is or whatever you feel comfortable with, try to figure out what you feel comfortable with just to see how the process works. And that's kind of what this was. But you know, this is the worst. Thing ever for Star Wars collectors because Star Wars collectors, a lot of them are. Oh, yeah, that is a problem. I mean, look at, I, I look at the Star Wars, Wars one set. Ship of that Darth Maul. He's coming back. I got him, boys. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I mean, at, look that. at that. But like, but, like, even if you're not just collecting one, like, it doesn't. Yeah, see, that's the one weird thing about Star Wars. And so, like, and we've tried to explain this before. There's so many subsets. So like, even yeah. if you're a completionist, you might not be a number one collection completionist, but you might be. And then now you're in this. Now that's you. Oh, good luck with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that. That, that set is a beast, man. And, one, you know, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, 20, 30, 34. So that's like 34 different countries almost. Oh, good Lord. Well, there's, there's um, some Americans in there and it's still not, it, it, it's, I mean, it, it, it's never ending. That's that. I, I guess that's also the the best advice, John. I mean, uh, you could that we. I, I think we can give. Is that I have a different theory than than Matt. Matt, once he starts a cover, buys one, he wants all of them. Yeah. I sometimes I can just compartmentalize. I want this cover of this book because I find it amusing and buy it. Now, sometimes you once you get one, somebody goes, "Hey, I found these," and and I'll take those later. But I'm not going to actively pursue them all. You know, I've I've had yeah. I've had sets that I had all the Italian 300s, and everybody that goes, "We well, have all those 300s. Do you want to buy this one?" Okay, okay, great. But I don't get into that obsession of I have to have every edition of this dang book because it'll make you crazy. I just take the ones that that show up sometimes. You know? Yeah, but that's why yeah. I think it's kind of great too. Like, and that's kind of where I was going. Like, I'm going to do the HQ thing now and finish that off. I'm going to finish off the mall thing. It's not going to cost me a ton of money. I mean, I'll probably be all in uh, around three, $400 for it after finder fees and shipping. Hopefully I could do it in one fail swoop yeah. in the next time I can you probably it. could. So yeah. maybe get around, you know, the 260, 280 mark around there. And then I'll be done with that for a little bit because that, you know, that is kind of how my style is even in the U S like I, I'll go and get what I think is decently priced up and then I'll just, then I'll start hunting, there's a couple books out there. I'm not gonna mention what they are because you know I like y'all, but I don't want all the competition. It's not always no. as easy as it looks. <laughs> well, but there's a big book. I mean, there's you're, gonna have, you're gonna have some things that all the other Star Wars collectors are gonna go. Wait, what is that? I've never yeah. seen that. And yeah. sometimes that's fun. Just like that. oh yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, my biggest problem is I'm not like I'm not a big, and you guys know this. I'm not a big show guy. Like this is kind of hard for me these shows because like. Then I'll I'll have something and like you know like the one picture solo Wookie asked about on the IG and it's like yeah I got that but like I just I never that's never what's been for me it's always been just for the memories and type of stuff and the stories that come behind it and that's what this four collecting is great for me is because like dude the story of the three months I mean I could have gotten more details but like it was crazy and it was cool and then like you get a tracking number God knows what that 
like they give you a receipt and I would show you, but it's got some of my personal information on it. So like, I don't not going to throw it to you, but like, it doesn't make any sense. I sent it to Matt and I was like, yeah, Nate, Nate was all, was like, dude, I, what, what is this? I don't know what to do with this. And I was like, Oh, well, okay. Calm down. Let's see if this shift how- it and take it at that. <laughs> yeah. Well, actually another trick people, uh, people often forget there's international track and trace. So very often, a foreign seller will send you something and either either their tracking number will never hit the USPS site, right? But you can track it through international track and trace, at least up to American customs through the, the, the indigenous service. So I told Marco, I was like, don't worry about it. Let me see the numbers. You know, I plugged it into the international track and trace. It showed where it needed to go there in Brazil. And I was like, it's cool. You know, it's it's in uh, it was in customs at Brazil, I think, on its way getting ready to come to yeah. America. So there's yeah, I mean, I wasn't freaking yeah. out. Like, this makes no sense. What am I gonna even do with it? Like, I don't even know. Like I trust Jim, I trust you, but like what am I gonna do it? You're I mean, you're giving me something that means no that you know, usually with your receipt, you 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 can I have given up on like I'm not I don't have time to sit like a doggy in the window and wait for the UPS packages to show up. So I never do that. But like to like notice like, okay, maybe I have foreign books coming in uh, and it's going to rain. I probably should have somebody at the house to pull it in. might be a good idea. With this, I completely forgot about it. And since I thought the timeline was going to be so far extended, we were about to shoot solo, wasn't it? We were about to shoot an episode and all of a sudden there's a knock and I went to get the door and I'm like, holy crap, this is awesome. I never expected yeah. to get here this soon. And Look I mean, I know I got. <laughs> Christmas yeah. early. That's like John said, that's the beauty of uh, sometimes these foreign books will get here fast. <coughs> sometimes it'll take shit. I had something from India take five months one time. I mean, you just you just never know. You know? Well, and here's another part of that is that, uh, you know, for our viewers and everything, time stamp now, because as Marco said, he's now looking for the second part of that Django Fett storyline. We don't have... Well, the the access. I have the second and third. I'm looking for the fourth. Right. So now you don't have access to just open up the books and go through and be like, hey, I found it. It's in the back of this book. So that's going to add some time and some complications. Oh, yeah. The hunt You're going to have to research it. Story. Yeah. You're going to have to research it. It's a database. Yeah. It is crazy. It's crazy. Uh, we are fun. at it's fun over an hour was there anything else you guys wanted to get into what give us a little plug for you guys show get us what else do you want to get into what's going on all right um i know we still have three more episodes of the star wars one we're putting together it was such a big set we broke it up into four uh we're working on uh an ultimate fallout four episode for you modern guys are into something a little more interesting decided to to go something a little more modern and show those and and the cool thing is a lot of those are our hard covers and trades and things like that so Mm -hmm. Uh, those are things we're working on the next couple weeks. Yep. That's cool. Check out their show on the channel. Like it. Uh, Wookie, what do you say all the time? Smash the like button. Hit the Go over there button. and uh, sa- save or smash that uh, alarm bell and force push that subscribe and uh, force <laughs> choke that like so that you can come <laughs> see the most handsome faces on this side of the galaxy. <laughs> I like right. it. I love it. And thanks for having us on, guys. This, this no, is no, we guys. appreciate it. We really do. Like, it is crazy. It is fun. It just, you know, if this, you know, we kind of preach it too with the Star Wars things. If it, this isn't fun, I'm never going to, you know, I just won't do it anymore. And like adding in this foreign element, uh, you know, I it's going to change your life. Well, Marco, I'm not, it's going to change. I'm going to like, it's, we'll, it's we'll fun. Add. We'll have to do it again. We still have plenty of content to talk about. Oh, like, yeah. This is the first by the way. Miles, yeah. Which is totally John Z's fault that I have any of those along with that Silver Surfer. <laughs> yeah. Those Turkish books are beautiful. They're yeah. Amazing. Hey, by the way, I, I own yeah. Because shortly after you sent me that book, that book blew up. Like that Turkish book now is not what it was. Really? Much- what's it what's it going for right now on eBay? $124. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Cool. What yeah. Do, do, hey John, do we know what Ilka said the print run was on that? Do you remember? Um they're generally the low ones are either five hundred or two fifty. Like Think they're about low how low. small that is. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah, crazy. it's crazy, man. It is crazy. I don't. Uh, it, it, a lot of people got to thank Solo Wookie because he was handing a couple of those out like Christmas presents. So, um, oh, man. Yeah. JJ Markwell just won one off of uh, our show. He yeah, our show. my shirt and where it was from. And congratulations to JJ Maxwell. I just sent his book out um, a little while ago. So, and I think five days later, that sale for one twenty four. Yeah, about two days later, that sale for one hundred and twenty four. Oh, I was like, good. That's awesome. No, I don't. Oh, good. It's, it's not good. about the price, guys. It's about collecting and and being in there. Yeah, and the comic karma is going to get back to you. We're right now. We're Solo Wookie's looking for some Japanese Star Wars stuff. I'm holding out hope he's going to find it because the I, Japanese I, stuff is amazing. I have yeah. a few few connections in Japan, and and I've got some guys doing some digging and some looking. We're hoping. We're praying to the comic gods for you, my friend. That's Thanks all. again. It's great to see, like a lot of my friends, you know, I, I appreciate it. I know, you know, we haven't seen each other in a while because of everything that's going on and hopefully we'll get out there sooner than later. Yeah. But, uh, Absolutely. but yeah, guys, I really do appreciate you guys coming on. Thanks again. Uh, Solo, you want to take us out? May the force be with you. Always. Always.